welcome to another episode of Boundless Body Radio. I'm your host, Casey Ruff, and today we have a really quick episode for you. This week we were able to interview Dave McGillivray. He is the organizer of the Boston Marathon, a race in which he finishes dead last every single year. This story is so amazing, and it's the reason why we really wanted him on, one of the main reasons we wanted him on. He's such a cool dude, and he tells this story so beautifully. I had paid for a little bit extra um, audio processing time this month, and so I thought I would push this out a little bit early so you could enjoy this interview and this story with Dave McGillivray, organizer of the Boston Marathon and last place finisher. Without further ado, enjoy. We are recording at the end of March, 2021, and we try to release um, episodes every, you know, two or three days. And it just, it just so happens based on timing. This was not planned, just based on timing. This episode is going to come out on the third Monday in April. (laughs) I couldn't, couldn't have picked a better time. That is the day that the Boston Marathon is run, the, the race that you have done consecutively, that you've organized for so many years, but we have to go back. We have to hear this is this story. I, this is one of my all time favorite stories. I have stolen it and shared it many, many times with my clients. I, I find it so emotional and inspiring and beautiful. Can you tell us about the first time you ran the Boston Marathon? Yeah, Casey. Um, so I remember 1970 listening to the radio broadcast of the Boston Marathon and a gentleman from United Kingdom, one Ron Hill. It's a rainy day. I was out in the driveway with my dad working on his car. And I remember saying to him in the rain as Ron was winning, someday, dad, I want to run the Boston Marathon. Well, two years later, I woke up that morning, Patriots Day, and I asked my brother if he would drive me out to the start because I wanted to run the marathon. But before we went out, I called my grandfather and I said, Grandpa, I'm going to run that race in Boston. He said, oh, they call that the Boston Marathon. I said, well, that's a good name for it. Um, (laughs) I'm going to go run it. So he said, well, okay, I live near the course at Coolidge Corner. I'll see you there. And I said, where's Coolidge Corner? He said, that's at the 24-mile mark. I said, okay, Grandpa, I'll see you at 24 miles. My brother drove me out to the start, and off we went. And I'm running and running. and got to the hills in Newton, about 18 to 19 miles, and bam, down I go, flat out in the hills. I got taken to the Newton Wellesley Hospital in an ambulance. I get to the hospital. I call my parents. I say, come pick me up. They say, where are you? I'm in the Newton Wellesley Hospital. What are you doing there? (laughs) Never mind. Come pick me up. They picked me up, drove me home. I call my grandfather, no answer. Call him again, no answer. Finally, nine o'clock at night, he answered the phone. I said, Grandpa, where have you been? He said, Dave, where have you been? I've been waiting for you all night. The old man Kelly goes by. The street sweepers go by. No, Dave. I said, I know. I, 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 um, I, I quit. He said, you what? I said, I failed, Grandpa. I failed. He says, nah, you didn't fail. I said, I didn't. What I do? He said, you learn. I said, what I learned? You learned that you cannot go along in life and set reckless goals. You had no business being in that race. You didn't train. You didn't do the work. You didn't earn the right. He said, I'll cut another deal with you. I said, what's that? He said, you train. Now, there's a novelty. You train. Okay. And I'll be there waiting for you next year. I said, deal. Two months later, my grandfather died. And I just said, I have to do this in honor and tribute of the lesson he taught me. So I trained, 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 and I was running 120, 130 miles a week. And the Boston Marathon came in 1973. I was 18 years old. And um, the day before the race, I got sick. And my parents said, you can't run. I said, I have to run. The newspapers are saying, Dave, running in memory of grandfather. They said, well, you're too sick. I said, well, can you give me something that very few other people have ever given to me before? They said, what's that? I said, a chance. Because mom and dad, isn't that all any of us ever want in life is a chance? Just let me toe the line. So they said, okay. 
and drove me out to the start in Hopkinton. And I took off. And I get to five miles and I was toast. Like I shouldn't be here. I was so sick. But I kept going. And then I get to the halfway point and I saw my parents. And there's my mother on the side. And what's she doing? She's crying. Why? Because that's what mothers do. <laughs> they cry because they're going through more pain, worrying about you than you'll ever experience. That's right. But then there's my father and what's he doing? He's, he's taking pictures of my mother crying. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I got to keep going. I'm vindicated. Go, go, go. I kept going. I got to the point where I dropped out the year before in the hills in Newton. And I'm doing the survivor shuffle over the hills. And I get up over the hills. And finally, I pass Boston College. And bam, down I go again. 21.5 miles. I'm out. I'm sitting on the curb, head between my legs, just saying, what a loser. Here I want to be an athlete. I want to be a professional athlete. And I'm always the last one picked. I'm always the last one cut. I drop out of my first Boston. I drop out of my second Boston. You know something? Maybe this wasn't meant to be. And then another defining moment happened in my life. And unbeknown to me, I turned around and I'm sitting on the curb in front of the Evergreen Cemetery where they buried my grandfather. And there's his tombstone. I can see it from the road. Wow. And that son of a gun said he'd be there. Now, he wasn't there physically. He was there spiritually because it's not all about the physical person, right? So I picked myself up and I finished my very first marathon, my very first Boston marathon in four and a half hours. And I vowed on that day, Patriots Day 1973, that I was going to run this race every year for the rest of my life in honor and tribute. The lesson my grandfather taught me, a very important lesson in life, that you have to earn the right to do these things. And I've run the marathon now for the last 48 years. Wow. Tell us about the decision you made to take on the job despite not being able to be a participant in the race that you love so much. Well, yeah, it was difficult when I was off at the position. I was like, what do I do? Do I run in the race or help run the race? And, you know, there were sleepless nights trying to decide. But I said, well, how can I walk away from an opportunity to be one of the directors of the race? You know, this is the Boston Marathon you know, the most prestigious marathon in the world. And I said, but I made a commitment to myself and to my grandfather to run in it. What do I do? And make a long story short, I said, well, I'll take the job and figure out the other piece later. And I was standing at the finish line of that year's marathon in 88 and high five and everyone. And, you know, everyone was excited. And, you know, I was, I guess, unfortunately, on selfishly full of self-pity because I hadn't run. And I tapped a state police trooper on the shoulder who was standing next to me. And I said, will you do me a favor? And he said, what? And I said, can you drive me back to the start? And he said, why? Did you forget something? And I said, yeah, I forgot to run. <laughs> so he drove me back to the start at eight o'clock at night. And I ran the whole thing by myself, finished it a little after 11 o'clock at night and was the last finisher, obviously. And I've been the last finisher of the Boston Marathon for the last 34 years. That's amazing. Such an amazing story from such an amazing dude. We will be pushing out the full episode soon with Dave McGillivray. He is the organizer of the Boston Marathon. So be on the lookout for that. And thank you for listening in to Boundless Body Radio.